I'm Shetland Bagpipe Mama, welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about positive parenting. I've got this article um, from one of my favourite magazines, my magazine, Green Parent. Uh, this was the April-May 2017 issue and it's got a really great article about from a lady called um, Laura Markham and um, she is the um, she is the founder of AhaParenting.com and uh, it's a really nice site, useful articles, lots of really helpful points on it. Uh, so I thought we're just going to go through uh, this article here, which is going to making the tr about making the transition to positive parenting. Now, first of all, it's going to talk about um, how when you want to move across to positive parenting, you don't just remove punishments. Now, some of you might be going, "What remove punishments? They're just going to go wild." And you know, I can understand your thoughts. You know. It's it's an easy association to make if you don't if you're not aware of the other options. But there are other options. It's good news. You need to replace the punishment with a positive connection with you. So what you, so what we're looking for is we're looking for the children to respect your rules and want to do what you say. You know, and that's the key. That's the really big difference. Making that switch over to child doing something because they're frightened of what's going to happen to doing something because they respect you. They won't do the right thing big shift really worthwhile putting the effort in and you know shifting over to that kind of positive parenting so i'll just run through a few of these tips here it can be hard it can be hard you know to start with if you've gone, gone from kind of the traditional kind of punishment method i understands the world through a certain kind of lens so he thinks the only reason to behave because otherwise you'll be punished you'll lose a privilege you'll get grounded but we want we want them to choose to do the right thing because they want to have a positive impact on the world not because they're frightened of being caught and punished, if you get what I mean. So how do we teach those lessons that they need to learn if you're no longer using punishment to motivate them? Now, it takes a bit of time. It takes some effort. You know, it's not a quick, easy answer, you know, transition into kind of positive parenting. But I do think it's worth it. Um, so grounding your children, removing privileges, punishing with extra chores, etc. These are all approaches that are meant to kind of teach a lesson. I'll teach that child. You know, we've all heard it. You know what I mean. Uh, but the research always shows that the child gets preoccupied with the unfairness of the punishment. So they don't know, they don't think, oh, I've done something really, really naughty. I must be punished. They think, oh my God, why are you punishing me like this? It's so unfair. And that's what they kind of really stick to. And I've seen it, you know, if I've ever slipped and kind of said something to my own son, you know, when I could do my, right, that's it, you're grounded forever kind of thing. Oh, it's so unfair. And that's all to think about. So no lessons been learned, no connections been made. It's it's not the way forward. The way forward is connection. But the lessons we want to teach are that your children's actions have an impact on the world, that they can always choose their own actions and they're responsible for them. Everyone makes mistakes, but if we make a mistake, you know, it's our job to repair things. You know, you want the child to learn that if they make a mistake, that they can try and repair it. We reflect, we want them to be able to reflect on their actions and um, help, help them make a better choice next time. And you know, it takes courage to do the right thing. But when we make those, when they make those responsible, considerate choices, they become the kind of person that, you know, they admire. And that's, you know, that's what we want. We want the children to feel kind of confident, trusted, you know, that, that people are looking at them and going, you know, you're a really great person. And that's what we all want for our children. So some of the tips kind of in this magazine. Um, so first of all, you know, when you've got a situation happening, move your, first move yourself from anger into empathy. Now, this, is, this can be tricky, you know, because when you're head up at that kind of hard moment, you're just like, ah! Um, but once your child knows that you're on his side, um, it can feel, your child can feel safe to engage with you. So without that sense of safety, your child's heart is hardened to you. Do you know what I mean by that? You know, where they're like, ah, so they're all defiant, ah, you know. And that at that point, you know, there's nothing can happen. You're all kind of ah, head to head. So um, if they expect um, judgment and punishment, you kind of have no influence, really. Um, so what you need to do, so what you, good thing to do at that kind of point is say, look, I need some time to think to think about this and to calm down and then we'll have a really good chat we'll have a chat about it you know so it's kind of take yourself away from the situation 
or you know if you can you know just stop kind of have a little bit of a kind of deep breath you know in you know the old count to ten those kind of things just kind of settle yourself for a minute and then to turn your anger into empathy a good little trick I use is just kind of imagine your child as a little baby you know imagine them as being loved if you, as a toddler you know imagine them with a really happy time you've had together and that can kind of just kind of click your brain over to you know a more empathetic place okay and then you've got to kind of st number two tip is to start with connection so children of all kind of ages they respond to the, that connection by being more open to your guidance so it's worth getting that connection in so if they're worried that you're going to be really upset with them this is where they'll come into kind of the fight, flight or freeze and they'll just kind of shut down. It's where you get children kind of, the lying about what they've done, you know. Go, oh no, it wasn't me, it was them, you know. And they're just kind of doing anything just not to get into trouble. And then, the, but the only way to actually teach a proper lesson is to just kind of create a, a safe conversation about what's happened. And to, do, and to do that, you've got to kind of remember that whatever your child did, they did it for a, re a really good reason. Well, they did it for a reason. Might not be a good reason, but they've got a reason. And sometimes it, they haven't got a reason and it's just an accident. But, you know, those are two kind of different things. Um, so, so if you don't find out what that reason is, you can't really stop it happening again. So number three, um, tell your child you want to hear his, thought, his or her thoughts on what could have happened. Um, and then let them talk and then you've got to try and reflect to clarify and just to demonstrate that you're understanding what they're saying and then number four is kind of keep your focus on connecting with the child and seeing the seeing this point of view um, and then this helps you and your child kind of understand what motivated them at the time what made them do that thing and it gives them an opportunity to work through the feeling of the unmet need, you know, because sometimes it's unmet need, you know, maybe it's not enough attention. We know when you're really busy, they'll do things just just to get a little bit more of a attention from you. So you can just kind of work it out, pick unpick what actually happened and why it happened. Um, ch children mostly know what the right choice is, but did something get in their way of kind of thinking that? What was it, and how can you help? How can your child, with your help, address that so next time they can make a better choice? There are, there are a lot of these little secret reasons hidden behind children's behaviour, but if you can make that connection, you can kind of ease it out of them and find out there's a whole big bag of stuff stored up behind that, you know. It can be one little thing that's happened and you, you're busy trying to kind of get to the bottom of that and then unrolls there's all this stuff that you never even realise is happening and then... But, you know, by creating that safe conversation, you can get it all out. And it's, it's, really, it's really useful to kind of do it this way. Um, if you just simply punish them, you'd have never known about any of that, you know. But this, you know, you've got this opportunity to get a closer bond, get a better relationship. And to help them address their feelings and kind of work out a better solution for next time. Ask some open-ended questions. You've got to try and keep the conversation as safe and light as possible. If you can share a laugh, you know, you'll diffuse the tension and kind of strengthen your bond. So just remind yourself, you know, this is a growth experience for both of you. You know, it's they're, they're testing out, you know, what happens in the real world with you as an adult, as a safe adult. So, you know, remember, they're not doing something just to hurt you just because they hate you so much. They're doing it. There's lots, of, there's lots of different things behind them. So, you know, when you're asking your questions, was your child aware that they were making a choice? What led them to that choice? What do they think about it now? How did that work out for you? Um, was there a cost to making that choice? Would they do it again? Hopefully not. Why or why not? And how could they support themselves to choose differently next time? And would they like support from you so they can choose differently next time? And that's another really useful question. And then number six, so empower your child to repair what they've broken. So if it is an actual item broken, um, you can explore and learn with a child. And rather than assuming that you know what's going to happen next, say, so, okay, well, what do you think should happen next? How can we make this better? How can we repair the situation? And just kind of ask, you know, what, what can we do? Has this incident showed you anything that you want to change? You know, that's bigger than this one incident. And... 
how can we make it better and how can I support you? So if it's an actual broken item, you know, maybe they could replace it with pocket money or you know, rebuild it or, you know, but they need to kind of process, this only works after kind of all the feelings and needs have been processed. Um, as once they're not driving them, you know, their natural goodness is kind of free to come up and, you know, and they want to make things better. Resist the urge to jump in with punishment. So we don't want to be doing punishment. So we want to be staying quiet and we want to be listening carefully. So it's not about being punished, losing privileges and being told what bad things are going to happen to them. Because, you know, you can do that and do that again. That's not, that's not growth. That's, that's stifling. So you want to be kind of, you want them to realise that what they do has an impact and take responsibility and to going to have a positive rather than a negative impact. So, and once you kind of, once you get rid of the kind of heavy coming down on them, you know, it gives them the chance to take responsibility, to kind of build your trust. If it was like falling out with a friend or sis, brother or sister or something, you know, how can you, you can ask them kind of, how can you help your sister feel safe with you again? You know, how can we make that relationship better? It's all those kind of questions. So number eight, what if they say, well, no repair, we don't need to repair anything, you know, it's all fine, we'll just leave it. Okay, that means they're still on the defensive a little bit. So you can kind of go back to, okay, I understand why you made that choice, what, how this ha why this happened, why you made that choice, but, you know, that choice didn't work out well. It doesn't mean that choice worked out well and you must still be very upset about it so i know that you know you want to do the right thing so let's have a little break think about it and talk more later so that gives them a little bit more time to kind of calm down and to you know reflect of what's happened and then when you start talking again go back to the empathy place you know and that's what that's gonna what's gonna help heal these feelings and then kind of you can model taking responsibility yourself by saying oh well, some, i think maybe some of this is my fault because i didn't notice you were too i didn't notice because i was so busy doing this and those those kind of things you know if you can see your part in any of it you know it's really useful to show that we're not all perfect that you, we can we can admit our mistakes and try and make them better uh, so step into your power, number nine. So as the grown-up, you know, you have more power than the child in the situation. And uh, the child is depending on your leadership, um, even if they seem to be resisting it, as they do. Uh, so, you know, you can reflect yourself about how this happened. You know, is there a way you could support your child so this doesn't happen again? Are there are little tweaks you could make in your kind of family situation that could you know help there's some children do need a lot more support than others so it's worth kind of just having a little reflection thinking is there something i could have done with this what you know how can we make sure it doesn't happen again and then you know set your limits as necessary is number 10 and um, so if your family has broke if your child has broken a family rule you need to kind of reinforce the rule going look this is what we do in our house homework before play if that's the kind of thing or in our family we use our words to tell each other that we're upset about something we don't hit, you know, those kind of things, just reinforcing those guidelines. Um, and number 11, so number 11, so here it talks about um, sometimes, you know, if the thing the child's done goes beyond the family, um, if they were caught cheating at school, it says here, or um, drinking with their friends, that kind of thing. And then it's, you've got to try and resist the temptation to rescue them from the consequences of their actions. And we're saying that, you know, you do you also kind of you want to make sure that those consequences are appropriate you know you don't want sometimes other people may come down on harder and and not i don't want to support that you know maybe that's the time you stand up but if it's just something that a consequence that you understand you know it's a natural consequence like you break granny's vase you fix granny's vase you know that's a natural consequence you know so you don't you, you wouldn't want to be rescuing your child from that going oh no don't worry i'll do it it's it's useful for them to know that if they break something that they should try and repair it if they can so much better for them to kind of know that and learn that whilst they're young you know it's all lessons for them it's all growth for them and then number 12 expected adjustment period so if you're going from the kind of model of parenting where you're doing punishments and those kind of things over to the kind of more positive parenting there's going to be a kind of transition um You'll be, you'll both be learning things in the new territory. And 
we, you know, there's no blame, you know, we all, we all do the best we can as parents. Uh, sometimes, you know, you do what you were taught. So if you have been punishing your child, kind of, and your child's been obeying out of fear, once you stop punishing, you might find there's a little bit of a bit of time where they kind of go, just a minute, I can get away and do whatever I want here. <laughs> and, you know, you might get that little bit of, oh, God, no, what have I done, what have I done, go back, go back. But, you know, it's worth pushing through and kind of, breathing deeply lots of deep breathing because you want you want to repair your connection and you want them to want to cooperate with you and you want them to not to want to disappoint you so what if they can't regulate themselves to kind of do this so you might find you know there's a few big upsets that they've been kind of storing behind and they're gonna let them all out now but you know stay empathetic and don't take it personally so you've just got to keep on reminding them that you speak to them with respect and you expect it in return. And, you know, you know doing the kind of, oh, you must be so up... And I understand you must be real upset to speak to me that way, that kind of thing. Uh, what's going on? Let's try and, you know, bring around some changes and speak to each other with respect and kind of build our connection. You know, so you can say those things out loud to them. And then the more safety you can feel, you can provide, you know, the sooner the child's going to be kind of willing to you know cry on your shoulder and share what's been bothering them you know they're going to feel a lot more confident coming to you knowing that they're not going to suddenly lose their ipad for three weeks or whatever they're going to feel safe you know it's it's going to be difficult you know there's going to be things that couldn't come to you and you're going to be like <gasps> and again with a deep breathing <sighs> and you know you can be looking for um look on online for support groups you know the channel mum group that's a really great one and there's lots of facebook groups for parenting where you can get other supports and you can go oh my child just told me this what else do i do and then just let it all out you know there's lots of people going to be advised but you know if you you know you're coming from a positive parenting view and that's the kind of stance that you want to kind of keep because you're gonna you're not going to regret this you know this is this is always going to be this is always going to be a really good thing for you and your family and for your children to learn for when they're teaching their children because you know the way you behave and parenting is what gets passed down so if you're a shouter you're telling your child they're going to lose everything that's what they're going to be doing to your grandchildren as well and you don't want that oh god how awful i see hearing your own voice from your child oh you don't want that so because so what we're going to do so once they've emptied all of their emotional backpack of uncomfortable feelings they've been kind of lugging around and then they'll be much more open to connecting and um, because you've stayed compassionate and on their side she'll they'll know that you're on your side and then they'll want to cooperate with you and that's good that's that's the magic thing that's what you want and you know they'll even start thanking you for your patience with them that's what it says here <laughs> so the hard the really hard part is kind of changing your own habits and breaking that cycle of oh if you do that you're doing this and it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time you know it won't come quickly but the more you kind of stop remember it and try it this way the better it's gonna be and you know you're really gonna you're gonna be really pleased you've done this you're gonna see the positive changes and so you'll have a really good incentive to keep going and you know and can share it share this information and don't worry about ch changing your child's thinking because if you change if you model it they'll change as well you know yeah share this do share this with your friends and your family because it's always really useful to have that kind of extra support when it's just you doing the change it can be a little bit like everyone's like oh what's happening what's going on you know why are you doing all this now but you know if you can talk through with a partner or a um, a friend or you know your mum or dad your, your own mum and dad you know going you know what we're going to try this new way and tell them those reasons then as they'll see the change they'll go oh actually do you know what that's a really good idea look how brilliant it's working when they see your child kind of being connected more open to you they're just going to think wow this is this is a really great way forward let's share it and then we're all going to be positive parents and that's going to be amazing and you know positive parenting can only have an amazing impact on the world you know uh, so yeah if you want to read more about the things that laura talks about um she's also got a book called um, peaceful parents happy kids how to stop yelling and start connecting now, i haven't read it yet but you know i think i'm going to order it now because after this article I re i'm really i'm really liking this you know and it's the kind of thing you know you want to have it there you want to kind of keep reminding yourself of it you know sign up to her e email list and 
it's surrounding yourself with kind of stories and articles like this that's going to help to kind of build your parenting armour you know it's going to give you all those tools to kind of learn different ways and be a more empathetic person and build a better connection with your family so i feel inspired myself i feel inspired just reading this so i hope you do too and um if you haven't subscribed already just um press the button to subscribe and thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time thank you bye